Okay. Um, so anytime that they just mean a general function, they'll just use the letter F. So you can imagine that that letter F is a quadratic or that it's a square root function or whatever. That letter just means this, these same rules apply for all functions. So the first um, letter is the A letter. What does A do to a function? Do you all remember? Come on. A number in front of a function? Makes it a vertical... Yes. Compression stretch, right? Exactly. Vertical stretch or compression. Now, that is the that is the same terminology I use always, vertical stretch and compression, but just so you know, the book calls them stretches and shrinks instead of instead of compressions. They say shrink. I don't know if my labs plus says because my labs plus is designed to go with many, many books. I don't know if it says shrink or compression. But just know that they're the same thing. So A is a vertical stretch or compression. All right, so how do we know if it is a stretch or if it's a compression? If it's a stretch, if it's a stretch, it's greater than one. So if A, and I'm going to put it like this, if the absolute value of A is greater than one, if you think about this, Y doesn't lie. Y, y changes, vertical changes, um, are always exactly what they seem. So if it says 2 in front, it's going to be twice as tall. If it says 3 in front, it's 3 times as tall. So vertical stretches make per vertical stuff, all the vertical stuff, makes perfect sense. Um, in order to be a compression or a shrink, the absolute value of A is between 0 and 1, meaning it's a fraction or a decimal less than 1. All right, now the reason that I just said vertical change over here is because there's one other change that can happen. It can be a stretch a compression or a reflection. And so if A is less than 1, actually less than 0, it's a reflection over the x-axis. Don't let that those words bother you. That's a vertical change. If something goes from being above the x-axis to being below the x-axis, that means it changed vertically. So just think about that when you're choosing which one on MyLabs Plus. A vertical change is a reflection over the x-axis. X-axis, which is kind of weird, but it is what it is. All right, so then let's talk about D because that's another vertical change, and um, vertical changes are... Good, they make sense. What does D do? Up or down? So D is also a vertical change. It's a shift. If D is greater than zero, it shifts up. If D is less than zero, it shifts down. B. Is it a vertical change or a horizontal change? It's a horizontal change. I know that because it is grouped with X. So
It can be grouped with x with parentheses like this one is, or other ways you could group your b value. Inside of a square root is grouped. Or inside of an absolute value is grouped. Or another one that people sometimes forget is up in an exponent. If it's in the treehouse with x, it's a horizontal change. <coughs> so whatever's grouping them together doesn't matter. If it's grouped with x, it's a horizontal change. And the thing about x is that x is a big fat liar. Everything that x says is the exact opposite of what x does. So, a, if a is greater than 1, that's a stretch, but if b is greater than 1, the absolute value of b is greater than 1, it is not a stretch, it's a compression. Or a shrink. It does exactly backwards of what it says. If b is between 0 and 1, a fraction or a decimal, then it's a stretch. Between 0 and 0? Oh, no, between 0 and 1. Sorry, thank you. And the only one that is normal is if b is less than 0, it is still a reflection. It reflects over the y-axis, which is a horizontal change. Alright, c is also a horizontal change. so it goes backwards because of the negative in the formula is why that works that way. So x minus c shifts right where x plus c would shift left. So let me give you, um, if you want to flip over and write on the back of this, or if you want to go ahead and get out a notebook to write some examples of things, um, whatever. 